because you're attempting to get over on something because you feel like the person you're giving it to don't really know what your pockets look like. Wow. Mm. So God says, don't lie to the Holy Ghost. That's with your money. That's with your body. Mm -hmm. That's with your thoughts. That's good. It amazes me how anybody can think that they can actually lie to God. Mm. How can I lie to the very one that created the thought before I had it? Mm. He created my mind. So he knows what I'm going to think 33 years from now. He already got that thought. But when I have the thought, and it's a wild hair, I say, oh God, no, I would never think nothing like that. Why am I lying to him? When he, knows. he says, you are sinning. When we putting it together, no, I ain't that bad. You know, I stopped doing this. So, I mean, you know, I ain't that bad. I'm, I'm doing that. No, you're still that bad. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Well, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, I've been, I've been doing better. And you have. Well, what about the totality of it? And I know you're growing. I know you're getting better. I know you're helping. But God's helping you. But you got to not lie to God. I can remember, bro, Bart, like, you know, it was times, man, uh, even, you know, when I was younger, going through college. And, you know, I'm trying to live for Jesus. I mean, I'm really giving it all I got. Uh, but just sometimes temptation was just a little too tempting uh, to give it to Jesus that day. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I gave it to him 93.5% uh, of the time. But my God for the 6.5%. So the reality is, Sister Ball, now I would go and, you know, after, you know, God spanked me a little bit. And I'm trying to convince him, well, God, I ain't really that bad, you know, uh, you know, because I'm not doing this, I'm not doing that, you know, God, this, you know, I'm not doing this, and I'm giving them all the stuff that I'm not doing, but I'm omitting the stuff that I am doing. Wow, right. six and a half. So guess what I was doing? I was lying to him. Jesus. Definitely lying to myself. Jesus, help me here. We got to be, un we got to understand. That even in these little corners and crevices of our lives, mm -hmm. these little spots on our beautiful white garments, these little chips on our angelic wings, God said, don't lie to me about those. Yeah. Because the more you lie to me, I can't pull you out of it. Mm -hmm. ah, wow. I can't pull you out until you acknowledge that you got a chip in your wings. Mm -hmm. But if you're walking around here thinking that, you know, your stuff don't stink, your wing is chipped. And you're talking about that's just my style. Mm. <laughs> That's how my wing was made, Jesus. My style. It's supposed to be chipped like this. Oh, my style. My style. Mm. That's just who I am. That's that's really that's the number one lie everybody tells. That's just I was made that way. You're lying because when you got saved, you were made in the image of God, and God's image don't have no chips. So with your chipped up self, stop lying to him. Wow. I can remember. I can remember. You know. Uh, I've been, been in ministry for, for a long time, by the grace of God. Young man, we've been in ministry a long time. Been preaching uh, <laughs> 16, 17, 18 years. Been preaching 18 years. Mm -hmm. And I can remember every time, I'm just, I'm, I'm bringing you all the way behind the scenes tonight, just to just bring some deliverance to your life. Uh, Every time there was an elevation, all right, I was, just, I was saved, thank God for that. Then God elevated me to a deacon. I was 19 when I became a deacon. Uh, so I was a deacon, you know, operating in that capacity uh, for six and a half years. God elevated me to be an elder. So I operated in that capacity in one church as an elder uh, for a number of years. Went to the next church, uh, Apostle Hen Church, that we came out of, uh, put in position as an elder, type of assistant pastor in, in his ministry. Walked with him for four and a half years. God elevated me to a pastor. All right. So in every elevation, all right, check this out. I, now, I've been saved since forever. But in every elevation, I found myself saying, now that I'm this, I'm going to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. Wow. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was saved. Yeah, I was saved. You know, love Jesus. You know, but you know, these ladies, they would just get my eye too much. So I say, 19, I'm a deacon. All right. I'm now good. that I'm a deacon, I'm good. I'm gonna cut these eyes out if I got to. You know, I feel the Holy Ghost the day I get ordained. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm ready to conquer the world. Uh, you know, but about three weeks after, the <laughs> eyes kind of went back. Mm -hmm. Help us, Jesus. And I'm saying, well, God, I can't, I can't live like this. Now, your pastor won't out there, so just understand that. Just, you know, hear Jesus through what I'm saying. 
I want out there. Ain't, you know, ain't no babies nowhere. So I let I won't without. Anyway, so the reality is, um, so I, I'm at this. I'm 19, and I'm saying, well, you know what? I'm a deacon. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going full fledged. So. I ain't even, I ain't even gonna talk to no girl unless I can see her being my wife. That was my mentality. And yeah, that lasts for about four days, and then uh, that was over. So uh, you know, I'm, I'm a deacon, and God is giving me the grace, and He's helping me. Amen. But I'm still telling them every periodically, God, you know, I ain't gonna keep doing this. You know, hey, I'm with you. Uh, you anointed me. I thank you. I appreciate all that good stuff. So now, God, you're to elevate me to an elder. So I go on consecration. I fast. Say, God, you know what? I'm, this, this, this is it. This is, you know, I'm done. I'm bottom line. And I can't say for it, this is the God on the truth. With that elevation, that I, I did stay good because that's when I connected with my beautiful wife. So I won't, won't know, won't know nothing uh, beyond the right. eldership. But that didn't mean Elder Hidden was perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, so, so there was still some issues. The elder Hinton was saying, God, I ain't going to keep going this route. You know, I, I'm letting my eyes see too much, Jesus. I'm going to cut this out because I'm an elder in the Lord's church. <laughs> so I'm, I'm you know, I got, to, I got to get over this stuff. I got to do something. God, you know, you know, cut me. Do something. Uh, help me. I'm, I'm pulling on you, Jesus. And so God, you know, give us grace. He brings us to another elevation. We get to a new church. Elder again, you know, God is doing that. I said, well, all right, God, I'm, I'm full fledged because I understand. I got marksman like folks at this point. I'm going to be a pastor. And in certain things, I'm just not going to be connected to. I'm not going to even uh, uh, participate in places. I'm just not going to go. Uh, all this good stuff. So, I mean, all that was, was working and going. But even in the elevation to the pastoral, there are still challenges. I want you to catch me. There are still challenges that we have to overcome. But. Before I was elevated this time, I had a real talk with Jesus. I said, you know what, Lord? I refuse. I'm going to tell you what Pastor Hitton said. I refuse to still have a familiar sin and lead people. I refuse. I would rather, God, you not allow me to become a pastor than for me to be a pastor and have to stand before your people and give a half-hearted message. So that means there was a discipline that had to come. Now, I'm trying to help us understand something here. The whole time, I got his spirit with me, but I'm not applying it to certain areas because I still want to satisfy my flesh. So I said, well, God, in order for me to be able to stand the way I want to stand, now, I ain't worried about how other folks want to stand in the pulpit and behind the mic. You know, that's on them. The way I want to stand, I need you to really do something in me uh, to just take whatever is in me that's wrong out. And he said, you know what, son? I ain't going to take nothing out. Mm. You're going to take it out. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Trying to help us here. Yeah. I ain't going to do it. That's not even my job. That's what the Lord told me. It ain't my job. And I said, well, God, why ain't your job? He said, because I ain't put it in there. Mm. Uh -oh. <laughs> so if I ain't put it in, why well, am I supposed to take it out? Wow. You deal with it. Mm. You cut it off. Well, God, what that mean? Figure it out. Lord Jesus, you real tough on me. So, I mean, you know, he be tough on me, so I just hand the toughness down. But the reality is, uh, I had to make a determination that I'm not going to be found or in anything. Anybody can get my phone. Anybody can get my iPad. Yes, they can get my computer. They can get my TV program. Good. They can get my uh, rental history. You can get whatever you want to get. And anything you see, you're going to be able to say, yep, I can see why pastor will watch that. Mm, yeah, that's cool. Eh, ain't going to be no jank in this fight. Why? Because I made a determination that if I'm going to lead your people, I got to lead them the right way. That's good, sir. So let, let, me, let, me, let me come pick you up here once. Um, if pastor, mm -mm, let, me, let me see. If your pastor has made a determination that he ain't going to lead you a certain way, your determination should be, I ain't going to follow him a certain way. Mm. Wow. Awesome. Mm. It's just not going to be named among us. If we say we want to go to this next level, we want to change the world, we ought to be able to change the world with transparency that if people got to vet us for anything, if they got to dig into our history for anything, that in their digging, post Bethel Temple Faith Church, I'm going to give you some grace for whatever. <laughs> in their digging, they should be able to say, I can tell that these people belong to that church with that man, and they're going this way. But if that can't be said, there needs to be a reevaluation to say, God, whatever it is in me 
that I need to deal with, give me the grace and the strength to cut it off. That's it. Your pastor had to do it. So guess what? You got to do it too. Yeah. And if I don't do it, that means I'm lying to the Holy Ghost. All right. Okay. So um, that was a long way to go to get to lying to the So uh, we're, not supposed to, we're not supposed to resist them. We're not supposed to blast him again. So it's the chief sin. We're not supposed to quench him. We're not supposed to lie to him. Hebrews 10, 29. Hebrews 10, 29. And I'm, I'm going to close on uh, the one after this. I'm going to give you all six of them. This is the fifth one here. Hebrews 10, 29. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like teaching like that. You know, I've got to have that response. Yeah, I love it. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. He says this. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy? who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified as an unholy thing and have done despite unto the spirit of his grace. The fifth sin we identify is to do despite to the Holy Ghost. Doing despite is translated as insulting him. Insulting him. So we're not supposed to resist him. We're not supposed to blaspheme him. We're not supposed to quench him. We're not supposed to lie to him or tempt him. And now we're not supposed to do despite to him, which means we're not supposed to insult him. One is insulted when behavior is done against them opposite of what is expected. Let me give you an uh, example. Um, you got, uh, let's use Sky. Well, let, let's use Sky, all right? So Sky, uh, I tell her mom, and we really tried to enforce specifically when she was with us, you got to have times during your day where Sky is just seated, not having free for all, running around screaming and yelling. Carve out 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of her just sitting down. Not playing a game, sitting down. And even if that means you need to read to her, whatever. Just, just sitting down. Well, why, why is that necessary? Because if you don't train her at home how to sit down, when she goes out in public, she's going to be an insult to you. Because she's going to do everything opposite of what you would want her to do specifically in public. So just like it is required, that Sky developed the discipline to learn how to not insult her mom in, his, in others' presence. We are required as God's people to develop a discipline that we don't insult him in the presence of other people. Mm. How do I insult God or his spirit in the presence of other people? When I let my flesh dictate my day, that was an insult to God. Let me pick up all of the aspects. I, I, I love it because, again, you know, I, I, I just get it. We're year one at this point, so I feel like I can kind of go a little deeper. Uh, just, you know, I, I'm already out here, so just stay out here. All right, good. I will. Thank you, Black Metallica. Yes, okay. sir. Um, uh, uh, I, I, I let my flesh have control. Listen, when I don't monitor what I wear when I go out. Mm-hmm. Teach today, Hinton. I will. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, I insult God. I insult God when a man will identify my body before he identifies I belong to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I insult God when a man's eyes are drawn to my figure before they're drawn to me being a daughter of the king. Mm -hmm. So I've got to control the desire to wear whatever fashion says is fashionable when it could potentially insult the spirit of God. Help me tonight, Lord. Uh, so pastor, I'm supposed to be a nun? No, no, not at all. I'm supposed to uh, have on, uh, 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 you know, all these stuff up to my neck? No, 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 no. What I'm saying, but what I am saying is I shouldn't be able to see more than what I want to see when I see you. Teach tonight, you know? mm-hmm. I'm gonna do it too. Yeah, I ain't scared. Go ahead, scared. Yeah, ain't scared. Yeah, 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 yeah. When, when, when I got to turn my head in your presence, 
so that it's not confused with me looking at a portion of you that I shouldn't be looking at. Maybe I'm insulting who God is. I'm walking around here and uh, there's a man, you know, and I got on a speedo and all kind of thigh huggers in the church. <laughs> and all kind of wife beaters and uh, muscle, shirt. muscle shirts. Tell me, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta be, I got to do all this. I'm coming to the pulpit, you know. I should be coming to the pulpit to show the ladies I've been in the gym. I should be coming to the pulpit to teach the word of God. That's good, sir. But if all they can do is they got to go past my, my hair and my, my shirt, well, then that's a problem. I'm insulting the Spirit of God. Teach. Pastor want to call you up to pray or to whatever, to preach. And, you know, well, give her, give her a jacket or something before she come up here. No, just stay seated today yeah, until you find the rest of your clothes. Yes, yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. <sighs> my God. All right. So I'm not supposed to insult the Spirit of God. And I insult him when I let my flesh determine my day mm. instead of allowing him to determine. My husband ain't talking to me. My husband ain't paying me no attention. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to wear this hip-hugging skirt to work so that I can get the men at work to notice how sexy and fly I am because I need something appeased that my husband isn't, show isn't showing me. Well, you you're missing it. You're bringing an insult to God and to your husband. Okay. Last, last scripture, and I got to get out of here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. I don't need to apologize either, because I mean all of it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Good, sir. This is what you get, year one and beyond. Just raw earth. Put an ER behind the raw. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Last, last, last point. He says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So we identify that we're not supposed to resist him. We're not supposed to blaspheme him. We're not supposed to quench him. We're not supposed to lie to him or tempt him. We're not supposed to insult him or bring despite to him. And we're also not supposed to grieve him. Grieving, grieving, grieving. When one is grieving, it is synonymous with crying. It is synonymous with suffering. God says, I don't want my spirit to have to suffer because you're named as one of my beings. When your salvation causes suffering to God, you're creating sin. When the fact that you're a believer brings grief to the heart of God, you're sinning. And he says, you can't walk in the spirit if you're doing these things. So as, as, I'm, as I'm concluding here, we're identifying tonight that in order for us to live in him, we've got to know what he views as being wrong. So since we now understand what he views as being wrong, grieving, lying, tempting, you know, uh, doing this by uh, quenching, all these things are sin to him, now I have to make a conscious decision not to do those things. Yes, Mr. Black. Gr grieving one more time was, was what, sir? Yeah, when you make somebody cry and suffer, mm. when I'm bringing shame to him, not like the shame in insulting him, but the shame that he knows you and that you connect it to him. He said that's not what we're supposed to do because it's his blood that has sealed us, the blood of Jesus, that has sealed us into the day of redemption. So because we've been sealed, our responsibility is not bring grief to him. Is that kind of like being a constant bearer of bad news? Yes. Yes. Um, y'all know I like to do, you know, I like to watch uh, certain, you know, good good TV shows. So I, I gave y'all a little bit of good times on, on Sunday. So let's let's bring that back in. On good times, there was a lady, <laughs> a weeping Wanda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All, right. uh, all Wanda did was she was a professional funeral mm -hmm. goer. Yeah. Uh, so whenever anybody died, it was like her job to go and give the news that this person is dead. And in her going, bro, all night, she wouldn't just go saying the person is dead. She would go crying. Mm -hmm. She would go, ah! that's how she would go through the girl. That brings grief to a somewhat peaceful environment. 
Don't be the spiritual weeping one. That every time you come around, folk want to go the other way. Because they already know you ain't bringing nothing but grief. You're a Debbie Down. Saint Debbie Down. And Sister Weeping Wanda. So the identification is we're supposed to be bringing joy to environments, not grief. And we definitely aren't supposed to be grieving the Spirit of God. Okay. Um, I, 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 I've done what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave the rest for another day in another space of time. So just want to make sure that we identify those six specific sins that the Bible shows us as it relates to what we do uh, to bring or to sin against the Spirit of God and how God does not desire that to be our testimony. He wants to occupy us and to use us, but he cannot abide in us when we're doing these six things. He's got to go. And we don't want him to leave from our presence, nor do we want to leave from here. So, uh, again, walking in his spirit. Amen. That's it. That's how I put our hands together for Jesus on tonight. Amen. Any questions? Uh, any comments? Uh, any criticisms? I'll even give space for those. I I'm ready. I'm armed tonight for all of it. So, whatever you got, I'm, I'm listening to you. Good pastor, we yes, as a people, um, I believe in my heart that we desire to, to truly be right. Uh, yes, sir. We do, to, to live right, to be holy. Yes, sir. Um, but you're helping us by teaching us that it's a, a, a mandatory. Yes. That we carry a certain amount. I, I talk about it often, badger skin. Yes, sir. Uh, when the word comes forth, it's piercing. Yes. Uh, it's cutting. Yeah. And um, so as we move further, um, that all of us would uh, grow the layer, um, because really, we're getting to a better place. Yes, sir. Yeah, we are. It's for our good. Amen. Yes, sir. It's for our making. And words, words only.